So, let me discuss the next group of antihypertensive that is dopamine agonist. So, if you take the dopamine agonist, we have one particular antihypertensive which is called as phenyldopan. Right, which is called as phenyldopam. Basically, if you take this particular phenyldopam, it acts on D1 receptors. It acts on D1 receptors. So, if you take this dopamine receptors, we have five types of dopamine receptors that is D1, D2, D3, D4 and as well as D5. But if you take this phenyldopam, basically it will act on D1 receptor and it is agonist of this particular D1 receptor. Now, by stimulating the D1 receptors, now if you see this D1 receptors, these D1 receptors, they are present in the peripheral arteries. So, by stimulating the D1 receptors, what it will cause is, this phenyldopan, it will cause vasodilatation. So, Whenever there is vasodilatation, the blood pressure of the individual reduces. So, remember, not only it will cause the vasodilatation of the peripheral arteries. Alright, it will cause the vasodilatation of the pe peripheral arteries. Not only that, this phenyldopan, it also causes natriuresis. Right, it also causes natriuresis. Now, what do you mean by this terminology natriuresis? That is the excretion of the sodium. So, whenever the sodium is being lost along with sodium, the water is also being excreted. So, the blood volume of the individual reduces and thereby the blood pressure of the individual reduces. So, this is the mechanism of action of this phenyldopam. I will repeat again. This phenyldopam is a dopamine 1 receptor agonist. So, by stimulating the D1 receptors, there will be vasodilatation of the peripheral arteries that is one particular action which is being done by your phenyldopam and the other thing is it will cause natriuresis. Now, where is this particular phenyldopam used? This particular phenyldopam it is used by the intravenous route right it is be used by the intravenous route now, it is causing peripheral arterial dilatation and as well as natriuresis. So, that means it is causing the blood effective blood pressure control. So, that is the reason why it is being used the intravenous route for short term blood pressure control in hypertensive emergencies. in hypertensive emergencies. Now, what do you mean exactly by the hypertensive emergency? So, remember when the blood pressure of the individual is more than 180 by 110 millimeters of mercury and along with that if there is end organ damage then we call it as hypertensive emergencies. So, we have two terminologies one is hypertensive emergency and the other one is hypertensive urgency. In case of hypertensive urgency the blood pressure will be more than 180 by 110 millimeters of mercury but there is no end organ damage whereas in case of hypertensive emergencies the blood pressure will be more than 180 by 110 millimeters of mercury plus end organ damage will be there so in those conditions wherever there is hypertensive emergencies we use this phenyldopam by intravenous route now in which group of patients this particular phenyldopam is being indicated Remember, this phenyldopam, it is very much indicated in those group of individuals where there is renal dysfunction. Right, where there is renal dysfunction. Alright, so in these renal dysfunction patients, what this phenyldopam will do is, it will improve the renal perfusion. So, that is the reason why in those individuals with hypertension associated with renal dysfunction, the drug which can be given is phenyldopam. What exactly is the problem with the phenyldopam, right? If you take the adverse effects of phenyldopam, the adverse effects of the phenyldopam is it will increase the intraocular pressure. That is one of the adverse effects what you need to remember. 
Now, once the intraocular pressure of the individual is being increased, that will result in what is called as glaucoma. And if you take the normal intraocular pressure, it is around 11 to 21 millimeters of mercury. Now, whatever phenyl dopam will do is, it will increase the intraocular pressure more than 21 millimeters of mercury and makes the individual to land up in glaucoma. And another important adverse effect which is being caused by your phenyl dopam is hypokalemia. Is hypokalemia. That means what it will do is, it will reduce the potassium levels in our body. The normal potassium levels if you see, it is around 3.5 to 5 milli equivalents per liter. And if the individual is having hypokalemia, what all can be the problems? Because of hypokalemia, the individual can have ventricular arrhythmias. The individual can have muscular weakness. The individual can have polyuria and as well as polydipsia. So these are all the problems which are associated with the hypokalemia. So this is about here the dopamine agonist which is being used as an antihypertensive, which is nothing but phenyl dopam. By acting on D1 receptors, it will cause peripheral arterial vasodilatation plus natriuresis and that will cause reduction in the blood pressure and where exactly it is being used particularly it is being used in case of the hypertensive emergencies via the intravenous route and it is used in those group of individuals where there is renal uh, dysfunction because it will increase the renal perfusion. The adverse effects associated with this phenyl dopam is it will increase the intraocular pressure and it will also cause hypokalemia.